Welcome to Word of Life Tabernacle, forward thinking, reaching new dimensions. In the name of the Lord, because we know his name is a strong tower, amen. Amen. And the righteous run in and they are safe, hallelujah. So we honor the Lord and we just count a blessing again for his goodness, amen. We want to uh, take you into a part two of our uh, lesson, amen, from the word of God. Amen. From the book of Judges, amen, chapter 2. Amen. We begin to talk about this particular uh, lesson out of the book of Judges, chapter 2. Amen. Previously, we talked about that we have to seize the moment. Amen. And this morning, we want to talk to you about this generational shift. Amen. That is come into our even into this day and this hour that we are now living in, but we see a revelation here and a contrast and a comparison from the word, even in the Old Testament history, amen, that even applies to today, amen. So it's so critical, and, and this is such an agonizing text because it, it just causes us to see the present condition of our own generation, in relation to what the nation of Israel as a whole had to go through in dealing with the Lord and how God dealt with his people, amen. And we want you and I to understand this morning that God is calling us, amen, to a higher level, to a higher standard, amen, where we might be able to carry forth, amen, his glory. But we have to gather ourselves and come to terms with some stuff so that we can recognize where we are right now presently in our walk with Christ. Amen. I'm going to read a, a familiar passage we have started from this particular verse, amen, which is a basis, and we're going to be looking at Josh, uh, Judges chapter 2, amen. Look at verse 11, which is a pivotal point, amen, in understanding where God is trying to take us, but at the same time, we got to work with God. So the verse says, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you we must remember, a part of the history of Israel is the fact that there was a generation that rose up that did not know the Lord. Amen. And this has been such a a critical point, amen, as I meditate on the word and, and praying about this, the word, amen, man, it's it just a weight on my spirit because I can see, amen, by this presence of the Lord, this present generational shift that we are in and how we can see things are transcending and things are moving, amen, not always in the right direction, but we must understand when we're moving outside of the realm of God, that's where we're in a danger zone, amen. So this morning, we must not allow, amen, our inheritance to be wasted, amen, on an ungodly generation. We must not allow ourselves to squander the blessings of God when we worked so hard and we cried and we prayed, amen, we believed, amen, we did all manner of things, trusting God to bring our people through, amen. When I say people, I'm talking about mankind bringing us to a place, amen, to a level where we have prosperity, where we got victory, where we got blessing, but only to see how the enemy has tried to infiltrate Amen. To destroy and to undermine the integrity of what God has placed with his people. Now, so we must understand the necessity, amen, of our nation, amen, of our generation is to make sure that we are pushing ourselves to turn, amen, back to God. We have to turn back to God because why? Because if we don't, amen, we will set ourselves up for a downfall. It is critical, amen, in this time that we as a nation come back to God, amen. Glory to God. Even while you were right there in your living room, amen, you are contemplating, amen, am I following God? It's a critical moment right now, amen, that you follow God. 
Amen. So we want to talk a little bit more about this generational shift. I want to take you a little step further. Amen. Because, man, this is just will not leave us. Amen. Because of the concern, I believe, that God has for his people. So we must recognize, amen, the Bible says in that verse 11, amen, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Now, this is critical because of the fact they started out as the people of God. Amen. Israel was called to be a model nation, a nation that would be under a theocratic rule where God would rule the nation, God would govern the nation, and he would lead his people. But because of sin and because of this frailty of the what we call the flesh, amen, sin and disobedience, and because of a shifting that came, amen, in the life cycle of his people, this generation rose up, amen, that did not know the Lord. But in not knowing him, amen, they turn, amen, from him. And they chose to follow after idol gods. They served Balaam. Because remember, Israel came into place of their inheritance. They came into Canaan, crossed Jordan River. They came into the land flowing with milk and honey. But in doing so, they did not conquer all that God had given them. They stopped at certain points. And we must realize because of the influence uh, around them that the enemy had upon them, it drew them into a place where they began to walk in rebellion and resistance, amen, and in disobedience to the covenant that God had established previously, amen, back in verse 1 and verse 2 of the text, amen, that he had established his covenant with his people. And we know God will never turn his back on us. But what's critical here in this, in this season is the fact that we can see the generation turning its back on God. Amen. I don't know about you, but that's, that is a terrible life cycle to be in, to find ourselves on one point. We are with God. And then to see the changing of the life cycle or the generational cycle to transcend and change. And now we see it going in the total different direction. And this, we know, cannot be of God. Amen. It has to be an influence of the enemy to try to cause us, his people, even today, amen, to turn after idol gods. And because they serve Balaam, Amen. My God. Hallelujah. It put them in a predicament and it provoked the anger of the Lord. We must understand God is emotional. God has emotions and he's uh, he's definitely concerned about every necessity of his people. He's concerned about their present condition. He's concerned about the fact that they did not maintain their covenant relationship. And so when we align ourselves in this generation, we have to understand presently today that we must not have this false sense of security to think that by not knowing God, we are free to do what we want to do. But we must know with everything comes consequences. And because of the decisions that were made Amen. According to the text here in, in Judges chapter two, according to Israel's decision, amen, to follow other gods, amen, the generation shifted itself from a place, amen, of righteousness to a place of unrighteousness. It is amazing to me that how we can start out one way, but we can end up so terribly another way. So this is what we must understand, that there is a warning for us. As a people, amen, as a corporate body, as a nation, as a whole, that to turn from God, amen, will bring, oh my God, it will bring such consequences that we don't want to face. And we must understand if we don't know our God, amen, we set ourselves up, amen, to be pawns for the enemy, amen, to toss us to and fro, amen, leading the people of God astray. But I'm calling the people in the nation to come back to God. Amen. Because we cannot afford 
amen, to allow the anger of the Lord to come against us. Because the Bible says he chastened those whom he loved. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm glad our father loves us. I'm glad God loves us. He loves us enough to spank us and get us back in line and get us back in order. But you must understand, God can give you some spankings, man, that no man can pray off for you. And, and so because of the fact the anger was against the Lord, amen, when God begins to execute his chastisement and his punishment upon his people, we got to understand, man, you got to go through the process. In order for God to get our attention, amen, he has to use drastic measures. And remember, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. God can even command our enemies, amen, to stand up against us. And this is what he did with Israel in this case because of their shifting, amen, and because of their mindset, God allowed their enemies, amen, to remain as what? As an indicator of the fact God was going to use the enemy, amen, to turn Israel back to him. But we must be careful here because we know that we cannot trust ourselves because anytime we are around influences that are not of God, it can easily lead you astray. And this is what happened with Israel. And look further with me in verse 12. I'm going to take a few minutes and talk to you just a few minutes here. Look with this in verse 12. It says, and they forsook. Now, remember, they did evil in the sight of the Lord. And in doing evil, introducing themselves to evil, the Bible says they forsook the Lord, God of their fathers. Amen. Now, th this is very critical because not only did they do evil, but then they made a decision to forsake the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Which uh, and, and notice this, they forsook the one who brought them out of the land of Egypt and they chose to follow other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them. OK, not the God of heaven. Amen. Not the God of Israel, but the idol gods that was around them. And notice what they did here and bowed themselves unto them. And provoke the Lord to anger. See, you, you, must, you must understand something about rebellion and disobedience and sin. Because it seems appealing at the moment. But by and by and after a while, you begin to get so deep, amen, and entangled and entrapped by it. You lose your consciousness of what is right. Amen. The Bible says in these last days. Folks' minds would be seared like in hot iron. In other words, what we know to be true, amen, would be seared from our conscience and give us an awareness that what is wrong appears to be right. And because they bowed themselves, they went in, they went all in. And so you got to be careful because when you listen to the enemy, he'll make you go all in. You throw everything in and they forsook God. Amen. They, they chose to go against him. And they provoked the Lord and the Lord's anger against them. Now, when they followed Balaam, notice what they did. Amen. They went into a form of really a co-activity. They began to do all kind of holotry and all kind of, of sexual orientations that were not conducive. Prostitution, all these, whether male or female, matter of fact. Amen. All manner of evil that provoked the anger of the Lord because this is why God did not want them, amen, to be entangled with these other nations because he knew they were idolatrous and it would lead his people into a place, amen, of apostasy. When, in other words, that they would turn from God and go another way. And this is exactly what happens, amen, because of their frailties, Amen. And their lack, amen, of consciousness to know their God. Amen. They were empty within themselves and could not follow him. And but yet they found themselves entangled. Amen. And bowing to idol gods. 
You got to be careful who you're bowing to. Amen. They were bowing to other gods and they began to provoke the Lord. And then they forsook. Mm, mm, mm. Verse 13 says, I'm just going to walk you through here just for a few minutes. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal, okay, and Ashtaroth. Amen. Again, this is uh, gods of fertili fertility and sexuality. Amen. All kinds of orientations that were abominable. Amen. And sinful and rebellious against God. Lifting up idols to a degree and to a point where they shifted themselves, amen, in total chaos. See, this nation, if we are not mindful of who we are listening to, we can find ourselves shifting from the very authority of God and being caught up and entangled in satanic bondage and occultness. Amen. That leads us, amen, away from God, but also by leading us away from God, it provokes the anger of the Lord. And when God speaks to his people, he has a way to speak, amen, that will lock us down, amen, that will cause us to fall down in humility because we must recognize that my God, our God has something to say about his nation. So we, we that are believers that are knowing that our relationship with God is very vital and important to this day and this hour, we got to push the nation back, amen, toward the God of heaven, amen. We got to seek to serve the Lord and him only shall we serve. Somebody ought to tell the Lord thank you right there, amen. So we, we need to shift or we, and when we talk about a generation, we're talking about a time or a people who are working in this particular time frame, amen, a setting of people who have come through a lineage, a genealogy of people who are grouped together for a purpose. And when we see ourselves knowing, amen, that this new generation rose up, amen, that did not know the Lord, we ought to be crying out for mercy even right now. Because when we look at the generation now, and when we look at the concepts and all the mindsets, amen, that this present generation we are in, we can see how we are provoking the Lord, amen, by not walking upright before him. And we are in a danger zone, and we must not allow, come on somebody, we must not allow what God has promised to us. Amen. To be violated. Amen. And to be lost in the translation of life. Amen. The Bible says in verse 14, and the anger of the Lord. I, I just want you to see the emotion of God. Amen. It, it says they provoke the Lord to anger in verse 12. Verse 13 says, and they forsook the Lord. Right. Amen. Verse 14 says, and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. I don't know about you, but that sounds a little bit uh, more intense. Yeah. Amen. When, when God's ang God is already angry, amen, and he's provoked, now God becomes more intense, amen, in what his desire is for his people. Why? Because he sees that they are walking in transgression against his revealed will. Any times we walk in transgression of God's revealed will, we can provoke the Lord to anger. We know God is a loving God. Many people say, well, God won't, you know, God won't judge us and because he's such a loving God. He's a forgiving God. But you got to understand God is a God of judgment, too. Amen. He's a God of mercy. Yes, he is. He's pitiful towards us. He, oh, Lord, he loves us. Amen. But he will judge sin. Thank you, Jesus. And we must understand if we do not shift our mindset from the degree of undermining and walking in a manner that is not conducive to God. Amen. We walk it in sin and rebellion and unrighteousness and, and lifting up idols and walking and serving in idolatry. In other words, we're doing our own thing. We're doing our own way. You know, I'm just doing me, as somebody said. But you must understand you can be the danger zone because if you're just trying to do you, you in trouble already because without God, you can do nothing. 
So we got to be able, amen, to shift this generation. How are we going to do that? How are we going to get God's people back in alignment, back into a place where they know that they're supposed to be walking with the Lord? Woo, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. Now, notice here in verse 14, he says, and when because God was hot against Israel and he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Amen. You must understand when we don't uphold righteousness and we fall for unrighteousness, we allow ourselves to be succumbed to the forces of the enemy. And we become slaves to that which we thought we had conquered. And we must be careful that we do not undermine the integrity of God's grace and his spirit on our life. And we must not violate God, amen, and treat him as if he's done nothing for us. Because God reminded Israel, wait a minute, I brought you out of Egypt. I delivered you out of bondage. I, my God, I delivered you from your enemies. How dare you insult me, amen, by turning from me, and then you're going to bow down to other gods? The Bible says he's a jealous God, amen. He won't give his glory to another. So, so we better watch ourselves, America. We better watch ourselves, brother and sister. Amen. We, we got to call the nation, call our brothers and sisters, let them know we got to, we got to turn back to the God of our salvation. Because this generation, we don't want it to be lost. And we're a part of this generation. Amen. We're in the mix of it. We're seeing everything that's happening, everything that's going on. And we got to speak out and let them know mm -mm, we got to serve the God of heaven. We got to stay on the Lord. Whose side are you leaning on? You need to ask yourself that question right now. Whose side are you leaning on? Are you leaning on the Lord's side? Because if so, then you're not going to bow down to other gods. You're going to tear down those altars. Amen. Anything that's not like God, you're going to tear it down. Somebody tell God, I got to tear it down. Tear it down. Because if I'm going to shift, amen, my generation, I'm, Lord, I'm so shot. if I'm going to change, amen, my mindset, I'm going to change my family's mindset, I got to call them into remembrance who delivered us. Amen. Were you there when God delivered us? Amen. From uh, Egypt, were you there? Amen. When God brought us across the Red Sea, were you there when God sent the word out to our enemies that the God of Israel is with us? Were you there when God fed us in the wilderness? Were you there? He kept our clothes, amen, from wearing out. Come on, somebody. Were you there? Amen. How dare you now turn and shift and say, I don't know your God. Lord, have mercy. Ooh, mm, feel it happy right there. So, so you got to understand God is calling us, amen, to depart from evil, depart from the realm of iniquity, and understand that God is distressing us right now. The nation, amen, is under distress, amen, because we don't know what to do. But it's one thing God is trying to tell us to do is to turn back to him. Amen. The, let the generation of this world know, the generations of this world know, is to turn back to him. I wonder, my brother and sister, are you careful to remind yourself and your family? Amen. That's a part of your lineage and your heritage. That's a part of your generation that you have a responsibility. Amen. To make sure they know the God of your salvation. Amen. I, I, I challenge you just right now. I want you to just take a little piece of paper on your notepad, and I just want you to think about your genealogy. I want you to think about your generation. Amen. I, I want you to jot down some names who are influencers in your family lineage, who influences your family. Amen. How in depth and tight is your family? Are there patriarchs? Every family has a patriarch. 
Every family has an influencer that influences the entire lineage. Come on, somebody. Whether it was your father, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, your mo grandmother, somebody within your heritage and your family line, amen, has a great influence on the entire lineage. Come on, somebody. And this is how God dealt with Israel. He raised up patriarchs. Amen. Amen. To lead the nation into him. And so you, even in this day and in this hour, we got to understand there are influencers to our generation. Somebody is showing us how we're supposed to live. Somebody has sown a seed in our life to show us what we're supposed to be like. So I just, 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 just take a moment and jot down some key figures in your family. Who influences you? Amen. Who did you look up to? Who gave you the spark to know God in your family? Amen. And if you can't think of anybody, amen, then you know, okay, God, I need you right now. Because why is this essential for you to know who influences your generation? Because you want to know where there's somebody full of faith, was somebody praying for the family lineage, was somebody showing me the way to God. Because now you must ask yourself a question. Do I know God now? And if I don't know him now, why not? Because obviously something or someone, amen, may not have sown a seed in your life to a degree that, that uh, challenged you and it pushed you, amen, to come to a knowledge of relationship with Christ. Amen. Some of you may have even walked away, but because there was a seed sown through your generation, Amen. It, so it drew you back, amen, into a relationship with God. You didn't understand why, but, but because a seed, amen, in your lineage and in your heritage was sown. Somebody had to speak about God in your life. And it had an influence at some point in your life. And it turned you around and brought you back to God. Hallelujah. Because we can all testify that we have walked away from God at some point in our life. But then because there was a seed sown, somebody influenced us. Amen. And that seed that was influenced in our life. Amen. At the right time, it drew us back to God. Somebody say, you better shift back, shift back. See, it is critical now in this time and in this hour that we l allow the grace of God to rub off on us so that we don't allow the enemy to take us over because we don't want the pattern and the habits of old generations that have had no relationship with God to keep us from God. And we don't want to walk into an inheritance. As I told you previously, we don't want our inheritance to be tainted, amen, and to be aborted. Because why? God promised, amen, that he would keep his covenant with his people. And see, God said, I'm going to keep my word, but are you going to keep yours? And my question to you, brother and sister today, are you really walking with God in a manner that's going to please God? Are you willing to turn down some altars in your life? Are you willing to let the enemy know you're not going to influence me, amen, to destroy my generation? Because the seed you sow right now, Amen. It's going to determine, amen, that generation that you're raising up. Amen. Whether or not they're going to follow God or not. And so we got to make sure, come on somebody, that we're not allowing ourselves to be hung up in Canaan. Amen. Mm, serving Baal and Ashtaroth. Serving idol gods and occult gods. Amen. We got to turn on those walls that's keeping us separated from God. Hallelujah. Somebody say shift that generation shift that generation. Uh -huh. You got to push your children back. You got to push them babies back to God. Hallelujah. You got to sow a seed now so that they don't get caught up later. Amen. That they will cause them to come back to God. Train up the child and the way that they should go. Come on somebody. Because when it's time, they're going to come back to it. But you got to make sure you be an example. Who's the patriarch? Amen. Who is the example? Who is the leader in your house? Who's helping you to understand the 
God of your salvation? Who's showing you what is right versus what is wrong? Who is helping you to see you can't serve idol gods and say you know God? Hallelujah. It's either light or it's dark. Come on, somebody. Mm, Lord, have mercy. Y'all get me happy here. So, so you must understand that God must be the central core and leader of our lives. God wants to be the center of our hearts. This is why it hurts God when he sees his people making decisions that are not conducive to their spiritual life. It, it bothers the spirit of God. It grieves him when he sees us, his people, who were called out as his people and who was given the anointing and the covenant of God. But yet we abort it and we lay it down and say, God, we'll get back with you later. And we're willing to go out here to the world and sin and say, God, we'd rather serve sin rather than serve you. But you must understand that's an open door to the enemy to destroy your house and you must not allow come on somebody you got to remember what God brought you through you got to remember you almost didn't survive that process and so you cannot afford to allow your children amen to go in the clutches of the enemy to be caught up amen see this this world this generation now amen we give our younger generation we give them choices we, make, we allow them to decide whether or not they're going to serve God or not. But I'm here to submit to you, you better start sowing some seeds of God. Amen. Because you don't want them to decide to go to the world because that opens a door to the enemy that will come into your house and come into your generation. Mm, Lord have mercy. Somebody say shift that generation back. Shift them back. 